Somebody give God some praise. Hallelujah. I said, somebody give God some praise in this place. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye lands, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his singing. Come before his presence with singing. Hallelujah. Lift up your head, O ye gates. Lift up your everlasting doors and for the king of glory shall come in. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. And all the time, it is indeed a blessing to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo, my God. How many know his grace is sufficient? Somebody look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, there's enough grace for you. And there's enough grace for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know, does anybody appreciate God's grace this morning? I said, does anybody appreciate God's grace this morning? Hallelujah. First, I want to say happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers. All right. Come on now. Y'all can do better than that. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank God for the mothers. Amen. Amen. I'm a, y'all know me. I'm a mama's baby. I love I do anything for the mothers. The mother's the only one that can say something crazy to me. It ain't nothing coming back. I just say, God bless you. Praise the Lord for you. <laughs> you know why? Because they earned that. I said they earned that. I said they earned. My God. So welcome to Wortham Chapel where God is transforming lives by discipleship through the actions of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So we thank God for you virtually and for you in person. We know this Mother's Day and we're going to keep this thing rolling. I'm not going to keep you from uh, your mothers. I want to say this. We're going to move quickly. We're not going to quench the spirit. We're going to let God be God. Amen. But we're not going to waste time because I want you to spend time with your mothers today. Amen. We've been through a pandemic season and some of us really hadn't had a chance to spend time with our, our mothers, our families. We hadn't had time to get together. Amen. And I know this may be the first time in a long time that you're able to get together. Amen. Amen. So we're going to move right along with the service. Uh, today, your scripture is coming out of Proverbs, the 13th chapter. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to start at verse 13. Glory to God. Proverbs 13. And 13, and it reads as following He who despises the word will be destroyed, but he who fears the commandment will be rewarded. My God, y'all hear that? Woo! The law of the wise is a fountain of life to turn one away from the snares of death. You, somebody say, You're gonna live, you're gonna live. You're going to live. Watch this now. Here it is. Good understanding gains favor, but the way of the unfaithful is hard. My God, the word of God for the people of God, thanks be unto God. Bow with me. God, in the name of Jesus, bless this service, bless this people, bless those with us virtually as well as those with us in person. God, I pray that you would touch and anoint this worship service. And God, I pray that your presence would hover, that your glory would show up in this place. Because God, we know it doesn't take you long to do anything 
For you created the earth. You created everything in this earth in six days and rested on the seventh day. So God, we know it doesn't take you long to do anything, but God, I pray that we will prepare our hearts and our minds to receive what you have for us in this worship experience. And God, I pray for those virtually, God, Lord, that you will begin to extol courage on your people as we begin to move back to in-person worship, that, that God, you will light a fire under your people, oh God, Lord, that we will get in a hurry to come and serve you and a hurry to worship you in spirit and in truth. God, forgive us of our sins, whether it be by omission or commission. Give us a clean slate that we may come before your presence. And God, that, your, that our prayers will reach the throne room. And God, we know that if you hear us, that you will answer us. And God, right now, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for being a God that talks. We thank you for being a God that hears. And we show sure enough thank you for being a God that loves. And God, we thank you for your grace and your mercy in this moment. We thank you for your power and your presence in this place. And we give you the glory for everything that's going to happen and everything that you're going to do. Touch our worship ministry, God. Anoint them, God. Bless them, God. Strengthen them and give them what they need to bless your people, oh God. That somebody who came in here may have been down, but they'll leave out up, oh God. Somebody that came in here may have been sick, but, but like David did when he played that harp, that the spirit will flee from them, God, in the name of Jesus. God, I pray that every office in this church, every ministry in this church would be anointed by the power of the Holy Ghost. Lord, that when folks come, that they will be changed in Jesus' name. And I'm not talking about changing for just change, Lord, but change for the betterment of the work of the gospel, for the full commission of God on the life of the church. We give you the praise. We give you the glory and all the honor. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Let everybody say amen. Y'all give God a hand praise as our worship team comes at this time. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise on today. Anybody excited to be in the house of the Lord one more time? Let me just see you wave your hands if you're excited. We're just going to sing a little congregational. Y'all put your hands together. Let that one. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Oh, bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Well, bless that wonderful name of Jesus. No other name I know. Well, I said, bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Oh, bless that wonderful name of Jesus. today. So y'all need to stand up and give a clap of praise to the Lord on today. Amen. Wait, wait. I say, I don't know what you come to do. I don't know what you come to do. I say, I don't know what you come to do.
come to stomp my feet. I come to stomp my feet. I say, I don't know what you come to do. Now look at your neighbor, say, I don't know what you come to do. I say, I don't know what y'all came to do. I don't know what y'all came to do. I say, I don't know what y'all came to do. Oh yeah, y'all with me, y'all with me. Here we go. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna take it back. Well, there's a storm out of the ocean, and it's moving this way. Come on. If your soul's not anchored in Jesus, it will surely drift away. Can y'all sing that? There's a storm out of the ocean. Ain't nothing like some old-fashioned devotion, is it? Hallelujah. Drift away, glory to God. <laughs> we thank God for the worship team, amen, giving us a little old-fashioned devotion this morning, glory to God, hallelujah. Hallelujah, amen, amen. Brother Musician got a little bit too happy, didn't he? I don't know what's wrong with him lately, he just been getting out of control, glory to God. Ah, <laughs> uh, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. I don't know anybody a witness. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to keep it moving. Amen. I first want to take a moment for everybody at Wortham Chapel to congratulate all of our high school graduates for this year. Come on, let's give them a great standing ovation. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Not only the, the college graduates, but we also had 
some some uh, I mean high school graduates. We have some college graduates. Some to receive certificates. Some to get ex extra training. Get their bachelors. Amen. Whatever it is. Amen. We wanna we wanna celebrate you this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Good to see my buddy in the house. Amen. I don't mean to put him on the spot, but so good to see. Amen. Anthony in the house, space to house. He just graduated you all from dentistry school. Amen. Somebody give God some praise for that. Hallelujah. Stand up, man. It's all right. Anyway. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. How many know we need we need some more African American dentists? Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Some of us scared to go to the dentist. And it shows. Anyway, moving right along. Amen. Amen. The Lord is good. Hallelujah. And yes, ma'am. My wife just got me. Okay. Amen. Oh. <laughs> I'm, I don't know what's wrong with me, y'all. <laughs> Amen. We thank God for, um, for you all for being here today. And also, I would not take a moment uh, more without recognizing our mothers of this church. Amen. Come on, y'all. Hallelujah. Sister Sue holding it down. She holding it down for us this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We know that we know that Mother Maldi has been dealing with some challenges. Amen. In her body, especially when the season starts changing. She's, dealing, she's been dealing with some things, and so we keep her in our prayers. Amen. We know that, amen, Mother Lewis also has been dealing with some challenges and, and evangelists. Amen. We know that you know that she would be here. Amen. I told her, I said, now, I said, evangelist, if you come back to church, you can't run the aisles with that roller now. Amen. I just, amen. We just can't. <laughs> because she is shout. I mean, it don't matter what she got on, she's going to shout. Glory to God. And so we're praying for them, amen, because our, we know that our mothers, and we're blessed, you all, because we have some, some beautiful ladies who have aged gracefully, amen? Amen. I told them, and some of y'all still fool me. I forget how old some of y'all are. Y'all might say, well, you what? I didn't even know there was, you know, even that age. I said, I need to come over here and get me some of this water out of Crockett County. Glory to God. They got the, jock, they got the fountain of youth somewhere. Y'all ain't told me nothing about it. Amen. Look at they got in the water over there in Bells. <laughs> Amen. Up here in Alamo. So we thank God for our mothers. I also want to solicit, uh, we're trying to bring back this fourth Sunday our youth choir. Amen. Amen. So I'm asking, I'm asking all the moms, grandmoms, aunties, everybody to get in contact with our minister of music, Brother Tay. He's trying to set up rehearsal for them so that they can sing on this fourth Sunday. Amen. 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 I said this for Sunday, our youth choir. We want to bring them back. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. So I wanted to make sure that I, um, that I said that and reiterated that. I also wanted to thank each and every one of you, amen, for taking time out to wish Pastor a happy birthday, amen, and for Wortham Chapel blessing us on our birthday. I want to say thank you. Amen to each and every one of you. Amen. And as I tell my children, I'm not getting older. I'm just getting better. Y'all the one getting older. I'm just getting better. Yes. Amen. You told me I didn't look good. We're going to have to fight because I know I'm fine. Amen. Ain't that right, honey? Ain't that right, honey? That's right. Amen. There, there you go. That's, that's the right amen. That's, the, that's your moment right there. Amen. You know, because listen, I've been married long enough to know I, I don't have to look good for none of y'all. The only person I need to look good for is my wife. I was going to say some other stuff too, but I'm, I'm going to be quiet. 
I thank God for my lovely wife, the mother of my children. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. The queen of my household. Hallelujah. Amen. She has been exerting her authority lately. We'll talk about that another time. Amen. So we thank God for her. Um, amen. We're getting ready to move forward with service today. We're going to continue on. Amen. And I'm going to ask that you would get yourself ready to give and to bless God. Amen. You know how we give. Amen. We give electronically or you can give a man physically for those of you who haven't been here if you're writing a check or paying cash we ask that you put it in an envelope and on your way out as you exit we will have our giving box in the hallway and you can put your gift in there amen so we won't be taking it up amen we won't be marching around glory to God amen amen but if you want to give electronically you can give on Givelify Y'all see it up there, man. Look for Wortham Chapel in Alamo, Tennessee. Amen. Or you can give on Cash App. That's dollar sign Wortham Chapel. Amen. We can receive your gift that way. Now, let me just say this. Amen. When you give, give to the Lord and watch God bless you. Amen. Amen. Many times we get our mind focused on a building, a fixture, or a church, or a people, but when I give, I'm giving to the Lord. You know why? Because I know God is the one that will bless me. Why? Because his word says so. Amen? Amen. Y'all got it ready? Y'all got it ready? Y'all got it ready? Amen. So let's bless it before we take it up. God, in the name of Jesus, bless every seed sower, every giver, and every tither. Your word declares that they're already blessed. But I pray right now that you would open up the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing that we don't have room enough to receive. I'm so glad, God, that your word said you open up windows, which is plural, which means you can bless us more than one way. And God, we just say thank you because any way you bless us, Lord, we'll be satisfied. We give you the glory, the praise, and the honor for everything in Jesus' name. Let everybody say amen. Amen. Come on, y'all give to the Lord. Play that bass, man. <laughs> Don't act like y'all not enjoying that. That's good, right? See if I was if I was in a if I was a choir director, I'd say everybody stand me. Come on, rock with me. Can you clap? Now, everybody that is at least my age and within 10 years of me, every one of y'all done marched in on somebody's choir day, and y'all going to sit out here and act like y'all ain't. You see how they trying to act bougie, trying to act like that? Hit, hit the beat again. Hit the beat again. Hit the beat again. Look at your neighbor and say, you're already blessed. In Jesus' name. And it's already done. Amen. 
and amen. At this time, we're going to have our worship team come with another selection. After that, you will have the word for today. Somebody give God a good praise. Hallelujah. How many know we have power in our tongues? The song is called Speak. So if anybody's going through something, you have the power to speak over that situation. If you are needing something from God, all you have to do is just say it into the atmosphere. Lord, I shall have that job. I shall have that promotion. I shall have that income. I shall have that salvation. I shall have that peace, that joy. Whatever you're seeking from, all you have to do is just speak it. All you have to do is just speak it. This the song is simple. The song just says, I shall have what I decree. Yes, I believe it belongs to me. It belongs to me. I shall have. I shall have. Sing that with me. Sing, I shall have what I decree. What I decree. Yes, I believe. Yes, I believe. It belongs to me. It belongs to me. I shall have. your mouth. we can take action. Just listen to this. Say speak. 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 Open up your mouth then. 
Jesus. Open up your mouth, man. Open up your mouth, man. Declare it. Declare it. Somebody say speak. Speak. Say speak. Hallelujah. You know what I love about the Holy Ghost is people connected to you will connect with what you're about to say. My God. We have to learn how to speak. The challenge is, it don't always look like what you say it is, but you still got to speak. And see, sometimes, let me, can we be honest with it? Can we be honest? Sometimes we'll say it, but we really don't believe it our own selves. But then you got to talk to yourself, you got to say, it's mine. That healing, it's, it's, it's mine. That deliverance, it's mine. That son, that daughter, they're mine. Woo, that prosperity, it's mine. That house, it's mine. That car, it's mine. That degree, it's mine. That position, it's mine. That place, it's it's mine. Somebody say it with me again. Say speak. I was going to save this in my sermon, but God says say it right now. So you got to 
speak it before you can see it. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but the problem with what you're seeing is what you're saying. And if you learn how to speak differently, maybe you'll start seeing differently. If you wonder why somebody's in the predicament that they're in, it may have something to do with the seeds of what you said they was. And if you want the fruit to change, then you got to learn how to plant different seeds with what you say. It's all about what you speak, what comes out of your mouth. Part of the problem oh, with the context in which we live in is we try to kill everything. So what we say is deadly. How we see it is deadly. But God says we got to speak life to it. What did he say to Ezekiel? I'm going to get to my text. I'm not going to preach long today. What did he say to Ezekiel? He asked Ezekiel, a question. he said, can these dry bones live? He said, Lord, thou knowest. He said, prophesy to the bones. Somebody said, well, well I don't know. What, what does that mean, Pastor? See, some of you think you need an office in order to say some things, but, but you don't need an office to speak God's word because his word will work all by itself. So when he said prophesy to the, he said he told the bones to live. And guess what? They had to get up and walk. Oh, my God. The reason why some of us are in dead situations has nothing to do with God, but has everything to do with what you said out of your mouth. And when you learn how to speak life, some stuff may just start living around you. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, change what you said. Change what you said about your husband. Change what you said about your wife. Change what you said about your son. Change what you said about your daughter. Change what you said about your church. Uh-oh. Change what you said about your pastor. Uh-oh. If you start speaking life, then maybe some stuff will start living. Mm. Let us get to the text. Second Kings 4. I got to move. I'm, I'm almost stepping in prophetic. I feel, I feel the Holy Ghost. Shit calling on our boots. Woo! I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. Oh, my God. And I'm going to say this because we're going to be wise. We're not going to be foolish. But we got to quit speaking fear in this season. We're going to be safe, but we're not going to be scared. Y'all hear what I'm saying? He said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Redeemed mean to be bought back to full value. Y'all hear me? Second Kings, the fourth chapter. I'm starting at verse 22. Very familiar story. I've got to move quickly because I'm not going to preach long. And verse 22 says, Then she called to her husband and said, Please send me one of the young men and one of the donkeys that I may run to the man of God and come back. So he said, Why are you going to him today? It is neither the new moon nor the Sabbath. And she said, it is well. <laughs> oh, I love this. Then she saddled a donkey and said her, to her servant, drive and go forward. Do not slacken the pace for me unless I tell you. She said, I don't even want an easy ride. I just need to get there. And so she departed and went to the man of God at Mount Carmel. So it was when the man of God saw her afar off that he said to his servant Gehazi, look the Shunammite woman. 
please run now to meet her and say to her, is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with your child? And she answered, it is well. Bow with me. God, in the name of Jesus, touch us now. Let your spirit reign and fall down in this place that it may affect our ears and our eyes that we may hear and see what the spirit is saying to the church. Let no flesh get any glory, nothing but the name of Jesus. And we'll give you all the praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Let everybody say amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. It's so good to say that and people actually sit down. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If I had a tag on this text and I got to move quickly, I would say she knew. She knew. She knew. Can I take a moment and just love the mothers? Can I just take a moment and just love y'all? Because there's some things that you all saw. There's some things that you all knew that nobody else knew. <laughs> I love mothers because mothers can see beyond uh, what they what is right in front of you and see what's before you. You're not talking to me. Here we have a woman of God who loved God and served God. She was a wealthy woman because her house was big enough for her to take in the prophet when he traveled through that land and that country. She decided on her own accord that she wanted to be a blessing to the prophet's ministry. So she made room in the upper part of the house, in the cooler part of the house, near the wall for the prophet to lay. She said, put a bed in there, put a, cha a chair in there, and put a lampstand in there. So every time he come, he can stay here. We'll feed him. We'll take care of him. She, she did this on her own. Now, pretty obvious, sometimes folk act funny, but thank God for those who want to be a blessing to the people of God. Y'all not listening to me. When I was a young man, my mother taught me hospitality, not by what she told me, but by what she did. On Sunday, she would cook a big dinner, too big for us to eat, although I could take a good chunk out of it. But each Sunday, our pastor lived in Humboldt. Our church was in Huntington. That's about a 45-minute trip. He was a new pastor with new ideas and new things. And many of the church folk was upset because he upset the traditions that they normally would do. But every Sunday, my mother would fix dinner. She says, every time you come here, you can always eat before you go home. You don't have to go buy a restaurant. You don't have to go buy food. You don't have to fix a sack lunch. You can come here and eat. And every Sunday, my pastor would come over. And he'd have dinner with us. Now, nobody else offered it, but you know how haters are. Uh-oh. Well, he always over so-and-so house eating. Well, they're the only ones that invited them to their house. <laughs> Ain't it funny how when somebody else decides to bless God, does somebody get mad about your blessing? You obeying God, but you got haters hating on you because you decided to be a blessing to the man and the woman of God. This woman was wealthy. She built the room for the prophet, and the prophet was so impressed with her that one day he stopped and he asked her a question. He said, hey, you've done all this good stuff for me. What is it that you want? He says, I, I, I can talk to the king I can talk to the captain of the guard. I can put a good word in for you. I can do all that. She said, I'm good. I'm here with my family. I'm here with my folks. I'm good. And the prophet, without her even asking, looked at the woman and told her, by this time next year, you shall embrace a son. 
she looked at the man of God. She said, now listen, don't lie to me. Don't play with me. I'm glad. I, I love the real saints, you know. Some saints, they be playing church, but I like the ones that be real with you. Said, don't, don't play with me now. Because you got everybody trying to prophesy now. Everybody got a word. The Lord told me. Well, what did he tell you? Then they tell you, if it don't line up with the word, it don't line up with God. I hate to tell you. I'm just telling you now. Everybody want to be a prophet, but nobody want to pay the price. They want to tell you what the Lord said. I'm wondering, does God ever tell you something? Did he tell you that you had a nasty attitude? Did he tell you you was greedy and power hungry? Did he tell? Y'all not talking to me. Everybody want position, but they don't want to pay the price. Everybody want the pay of a doctor, but they don't want to go to school for six years. Everybody want to drive a Maserati, but they don't want to pay $1,000 for a service. Everybody want a big house, but they don't want a mortgage. I'm, I'm trying to figure out how you put two and two together. It's just Stuff just don't happen for free. Everybody wants the high-paying job, but nobody wants to go to get the training. They want the prominence. They want the power, but they don't want to pay the price. She looked at the prophet. She said, don't lie to me. Don't, don't play with me now. Now, if you notice in the text, if you read the story very well, she didn't ask for a son. He told her she was going to have a son. And as the story goes, one day the son got sick. He said, my head, my head. The Bible says that he died. Many historians have said it was if he had a heat stroke. Because when you have a heat stroke, the, one of the first symptoms is a terrible and drastic headache. The Bible says that the, the son died. And, and when he died, the mother was 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 in peril she was in in pain because she didn't ask for it mother sue it was spoken to her and then god did what the man of god said you know that's a sign of a true prophet right if they speak it and it comes to pass then it's of god <laughs> it came to pass but Something happened in the interim where the young man died. And the Bible says, this is what I love. This is what I love. And I'm, I'm, I'm about to get y'all out of here, I promise you. This is what I love. The Bible says that she went to her husband. She was in order. She didn't move out of order. She went to her husband. See, some of us need to learn protocol and respect in the church. And if we don't have protocol and respect in the church, I'm going to make somebody mad. It's because you don't have protocol and respect in your house. She did not move out of order. She moved in order. She went to her husband first. I'm certain that she had the power to do it on her own. I'm certain that she didn't really have to ask, but I'm so glad she did because it lets me know she moved in order. Now her son had died and you know she wasn't thinking straight and clear but she was still had enough in her to say baby I need to go and see the prophet. Can you tell one of the young servants to get a donkey and give me a ride to go see the man of God? Because sometimes, church, when, when, when God bless you with something, especially if God spoke it and something happens to what God spoke, and you got to go back to the person who said it. Oh, my God. See, every now and then, you need to be reminded, prophets, preachers, and priests, we need to be reminded of some of the things that you said you are accountable for. That's why I say be very careful when you start reaching for titles and anointings because there's a price to be paid with it because some of y'all not ready for folk to come to you with their worst problems or with situations that's so difficult and they're about to lose their mind and about to lose everything. With Some of y'all not ready to wrestle with that, but you want the microphone. Want to be on Facebook Live. Want to be on YouTube. But you ain't pastoring on YouTube. You're not pastoring on Facebook Live. You pastor when you get that call at midnight. 
I say, Pastor, if you don't do something, I'm going to go to jail tonight. Some of y'all ain't ready for that because you're responsible for what you spoke. Uh Uh-oh. (sighs) <sighs> you're responsible for what God has assigned to you. I'm talking real tonight. I'm, but, but, I'm, I'm, but I'm touching on the mothers because it's the mothers who never give up on a child. She told the young man, thank God for the mothers that don't give up. <sighs> She talked to her husband. She got the servant. The Bible says she got on the donkey. She told him, and roll fast. Don't worry about my booty. It's going to be all right. Y'all, I see some of y'all wasn't born and raised on a farm. Y'all don't know nothing about riding horses. You don't know nothing about riding donkeys. But let me tell you something. It, 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 it caused your posterior to get sore, especially if you ride fast. Glory to God. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all don't. Y'all get it. Y'all just just Google it, YouTube it. You can watch it. Amen. That's what the young folk do, right? So so she she said, don't slow down. Don't ride slow for me. She said, because I got to get to the man of God. And this is the issue with the church that I see right now is Mother Sue's people don't have the push to get to God like they used to. See, the challenge is we got an excuse for everything, but we don't miss nothing that we want to go to, but we can miss church at any drop of the hat. I got a sneeze. I'm not going to church. I got a cough. I'm not going to church. My toilet water was blue instead of green. I'm not going to church today. The dishwasher didn't come on after I put it on two hour delay. I'm not going to church. We miss God for everything, but, but, but let there be an event. You, you, you'll climb walls, you'll scale fences, you'll pay hundreds of dollars, you'll dress up, wear makeup. No, them folk don't like you anyway. you look good, put your new shoes on, drive. You'll rent a car even if you got a regular car. You'll rent one just so you can look like you got some to get to that place. But when it comes to the house of God, we don't have the drive that the Shunammite woman had. She had drive. She said, she said I'm going to get there come hell or high water. I got to get to the man of God. I've got to get to the word of God. I got to get to the place where I received this blessing. Thank God for the mothers. Somebody say thank God for the mothers. She rode that donkey. She got there. The Bible, the Bible says that And when she got to Mount Carmel, that the man of God saw her from afar off. Let me help somebody. You don't forget folk who bless you. See, some folk can can do stuff for you and give you stuff, but, but folk that bless you, you don't forget them. The Bible says that she was afar off and he saw her and he recognized her because she had blessed him. Y'all not hearing me today because many times uh, we don't even realize why we've been so good to somebody but it may be the fact that when you're in distress that somebody will see you afar off because you blessed them a long time. I'm not I'm talking to somebody today. See may, maybe it's that little guy that was weird in class and, and you was nice to them because, because they was being picked on but you didn't know that the little rascal was going to grow up and be a judge one day and when you walked in the courthouse he saw you and had favor I'm talking to somebody here you need to learn how to love on folks and and bless folks because you never know where they're going to be they may be a lawyer they may be a judge they may be the banker that helped you get your first house they may be the car salesman to get you a good deal on your car you need to learn how to bless somebody love somebody look at your neighbor and say you need to learn how to bless folks But she knew, but she knew, she knew, I'm I'm getting ready to close. She knew what God could do because watch this, the fact, Brother Terry, that she ran as hard as she did and the fact that she went as far as she did, she did not go to receive a diagnosis that she had already received, but she already knew that God was about to do something about it. Y'all not talking to me. See, I thank God for the mothers of the church 
because the mothers can see a bad kid and they'll say he's blessed. <sighs> the world may have given up on him because the diagnosis is death. <sighs> But, but, but the mother don't say death, she says life. Oh, y'all not talking to me. Because she doesn't speak what is, she speak what is about to be. Y'all not talking. I don't need anybody to tell me I'm in a ditch. I just need you to help me get up out the ditch. I don't need you to tell me I, I'm sick. I already got the diagnosis on the paper, but I need somebody to tell me I can be healed. I don't need to tell nobody to tell me that I'm bankrupt, that you don't saw my name in a newspaper. I, I need somebody to tell me that God can turn it around. I, I don't need anybody to tell me where I'm at, but I need somebody to tell me what God can tell me I'm so glad that she knew that if I just get to the man of God that God is about to change my situation and some of you are just one rough ride away from God turning around your son from God turning around your daughter from God turning around your finances from God turning around your ministry from God turning around your church I'm so glad church that when she got to the man of God that she did not speak with doubt she did not talk negative she didn't say anything out of the way but she said one thing it is well somebody look at your neighbor prophesy to your neighbor and tell them that it is well. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what you're dealing with. I don't care what's fighting against you. It is well. Your health is well. Your marriage is well. Your career is well. Your finances is well. Your love is well. Your healing is well. Everything in your life. I'm about to get happy, y'all. It is well. Your business is well. Your praise is well. Your worship is well. Your son is well. Your daughter is well. Your grandchild is well. Everything. Somebody speaking. Everything. It is well. It is well. It is well. If you don't hear nothing else today, I need you to hear me tell you that it is well. Everything is well. Everything that leaves out no thing, it is well. Watch this. You just got to change how you speak to the situation. You got to learn how to say something that the devil's not used to hearing. See, normally when you get bad news, you start wringing your hands and saying, oh Lord, what am I gonna do? But God is looking for some people in this season, in this time right now. Yes, COVID-19 is real, but it is well with my soul. Yes, 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 we done lost some folks, but it is well, because God just don't love us here, but God loves us all the way to glory. Somebody say, it's well, it's well, it's well, it's well, it's well, it's well. It's well. I don't care what it is, it's well. I don't care who told you something different. It's still well. Can I prophesy to myself? Some of y'all may need to join in with me. But my deacon board is well. My praise team is well. My musical equipment is well. My musicians is well. My finances is well. My daughters are well. My son is a giant in the land of God. Everything is well. My pews is well. My carpet is well. My car is well. 
I'm not leaving that now, church. My shoes are well. My suit is well. My shirt is well. My ministry is well. My shout is well. Everything is well. Because I'm going to say it is. And God will honor what you speak into existence. Somebody say it is. It is. It is. It is. It is well. Woo! Can I give you? Can I give you insight on the story? She left, oh my God. She left a dead son. But she didn't leave with a dead spirit. Because when she got to him, when, listen, before she left her husband, she told her husband, it is well. When she got to the prophet, she said, it is well. Watch this. And when she got home, what happened? It was well. Some of y'all missed that. Some of y'all. I'm done. I'm done. Listen. But if you want to, uh oh, some of y'all don't 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 shout the church down. But if you want to change what you go home to, then change how you talk to it. Some of y'all got an empty house right now, but you got to learn how to speak to that too. And say, it is well. This, this recliner, I don't even have, I don't even sit in it, but God got somebody made to sit in this thing. Uh, Y'all not going to talk to me. Mm. Somebody say, it is well. I'm done. Y'all give God a hand praise. I'm done. Before we get ready to close, I want to make a quick announcement. We have something at Wortham Chapel for every mother that's here today. When you get ready to leave out of the church, we have a gift for you in the hallway that we will be giving out to all of our mothers because we love you. And I got something a little extra for the mothers just because I'm a mama's baby. <laughs> Amen. So we're going to send y'all home sweet because that's what y'all are. Y'all are sweet mothers. Amen. Our deacons, amen, they have a presentation, amen, that we're going to let them do at this time. Amen. Amen. You got to praise God through the technical difficulties. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't, uh, I didn't get the program. Uh, we just, uh, from the music ministry, just wanted to tell Pastor happy birthday. Uh, we hope that you enjoyed it. Um, Going to sing you a, you know, a real short, real short happy birthday. Uh, I didn't practice it, so y'all bear with me. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Y'all can put your hands together, though. 
Hallelujah. Oh, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Oh, hi. To you. Y'all sing that with me. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. It's your birthday. Can y'all sing it with me? It's your birthday. 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 Amen. Is that it? All right. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you. Hallelujah. Y'all, amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. I know they probably have some other things. I know they have some technical, technical difficulties. Amen. And we thank God for Brother Amen Willis, who has been working tirelessly in our, amen, media ministry. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. He's put us on YouTube. Amen. He puts us on Facebook Live. And we thank God for William. Amen. Being about 6'3", working the camera. <laughs> amen. And I'm still trying to figure out what is Deuce doing. He's, he's doing something. Amen. Glory to God. No, I'm just kidding. We thank God for Deuce as well. <laughs> All right, we're getting ready to close. I'm trying to get y'all home, but I, I would not be remiss to say, as anyone who don't know the Lord Jesus in the pardon of your sin, you can get to know him now. There's not a mother on this earth that would not take joy in somebody giving their life to the Lord on Mother's Day. So if you're here, we, we ask that you come. If you're on virtually, send us a message. We'll be happy to share the plan of salvation with you. If you would just confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, thou shalt be saved. He that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Are you here? Won't you come? Won't you come? If you're looking for a church home, the doors of God's house is always open. You can come and join a bunch of imperfect people serving and worshiping a perfect God right here at Wortham Chapel. Are you here? Won't you come? Glory to God. Hallelujah. If you've been on church hiatus, you've been on church vacation, we bid you to come back, amen, and get fully ingrained and fully committed to the work of Christ at Wortham Chapel. Won't you come? Won't you come? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If there be no one, you have anything else, Deacon? Amen. Before I close, stand on your feet. We're closing. I'm going to get y'all to your mothers. Amen. Amen. Oh. Just real quick, I want to say thank you for my Mother's Day present. Uh, I got a gift bag in there. Amen. <laughs> thank y'all for blessing Lady Tharp. Amen. Somebody give God some praise right there. I say this, y'all really bless my wife. Amen. And it means a lot to me, and it means a lot to her family. They talk all the time about how good Wortham Chapel is to us. 
it means a lot more than you know, church. Amen. All right, let's get ready and go. Amen. Sister Marshall, you cook? Glory to God. I want some... <laughs> Amen. She done got good tickle right there. <laughs> Amen. I know, hey, mothers, if you didn't cook, you get ready to go to restaurants. I'm going to get you out in time. Amen. Brother Hester, thank you for bringing the temperature down. We appreciate you being cool as you are. Glory to God. Let us pray. God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the mothers, God, who already knew what you was going to do before you did it. And we command that knowing blessing, that assured blessing, to be on every life that's in this place. For if we are alive, we have a mother. And we thank you for mothers, whether they were in our lives or not. We thank you for them. And we pray that you would bless them and that you would keep them and that you would do with them what your will would have done. Lord, we pray that you would bless this ministry and this church, that we will go to the next level in your Holy Spirit that we will go to the next level in our praise and our worship, that we will go into our next level, God, in finances and in business, in the name of Jesus. And God, we give you glory and honor on this day. And we glorify your name because it's worthy to be praised. Heal us where we're sick. Deliver us where we're bound. Pick us up where we are down and bless us where we are in deficit and we give you the praise we give you the glory now unto him who is able to keep us from falling when all else fails to the most high God to the most wise God to whom belongs all dominion and all power this we ask in Jesus name let the church say amen amen and amen Please stay where you are until our ushers, amen, dismiss you. Mothers, don't forget, amen, that we have a gift in the hallway for you. We're going to start with this section right here. Y'all just hold your spot, amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I forgot to tell y'all, y'all look good today. Some of y'all almost look as good as me. Blessing for you. A blessing for you. Blessing for 